Hi guys, tonight we're going to talk about how you identify minerals. In other words, if you picked one up off the ground, how you would figure out which one it was. So here's a list of the things that we're going to go over. Okay, the ways you identify a mineral is first by its color, its luster, then its streak, cleavage and fracturing, hardness, density, and then sometimes they have some special properties that will help you identify it. Now it's important to know that you can't use just one of these things. In other words, you can't just pick up a mineral and look at it and say it's purple so it's amethyst. It doesn't work that way because there are a lot of different minerals that can be the same color. So that goes along with all of these things. So the more of these tests that you can use to identify the mineral, the more accurate your identification is going to be. Okay, so color by itself is a terrible way to identify a mineral. Okay, you can have two completely different minerals that can be the same color and the exact same mineral can be a bunch of different colors. In fact, you can have crystals that are half one color and half another color. So color itself would be a great starting point, but that's all it is, is a starting point. So don't use it by itself. Not a good idea. Luster is the way that the mineral reflects light. So we have three types of luster. We have metallic, submetallic, and non-metallic. Okay, think about the first part of that word there for metallic, metal. It looks like metal. So the one on the right that you see looks like silver. So it's got a metallic luster to it. Submetallic means that it's dull in most areas, but it still has a little bit of shine towards it. So it's kind of in the middle between metallic and non-metallic. Non-metallic means it's completely dull, so in other words it would look kind of like a rock, or it's completely clear and it looks like glass. So you can see that amethyst crystals that you see under there, and you can kind of see through each of the crystals. It's kind of glassy. The next test that you can do for it is called a streak test and the streak is the color of the minerals powder. So when you rub it across a piece of porcelain, then it'll actually write on it. Kind of like using a piece of chalk to write on a chalkboard. You're basically powdering that piece of chalk across the, the board and so it lets you write on it. Okay, so the streak is the color of that powdered mineral. Now this one's interesting because the streak color may not match the minerals color. So I know that there are a few minerals out there that have a street color of brown, but it's a light colored mineral, or you have maybe a greenish colored mineral and the streak is going to be white. So it really can help to narrow down which mineral you've got. Cleavage and fracturing is how it breaks. So if it's breaking in layers, then that's an example of cleavage. Cleaving is the verb, meaning that it's peeling off in layers. Fracturing means it's breaking along whatever surface it wants to, so it's going to have jagged edges or irregular surfaces. So if you look at the examples that I have here, mica is at the top, so you can see that it's super, super flat on the bottom and then it will actually peel off in layers. So that's cleavage or cleaving. Okay, quartz down below, you can see that it's just kind of cracked or fractured in all different areas going all different directions. Okay, so that's an example of fracturing. Hardness. Okay, so technically by definition it's the minerals resistance to being scratched. It's how hard it is. So we rank it on Mohs hardness scale which you see in that diagram below. That Mohs hardness scale ranks from 1 to 10. 1 is the softest, 10 is the hardest. And there are certain minerals that represent certain numbers. So calcite represents a 3 on the hardness scale. Um, quartz is a 7 on the hardness scale. Number 1, talc, that's used in talcum powder. Okay, talc is really, really soft and you can scratch it with your fingernail. The hardest known mineral that we have is the diamond. And diamond is not always gem quality meaning that sometimes the crystals are not as pretty as you would hope and so those diamonds are used for things like the edges of scalpels that need to be really really hard for cutting. They're also used in drill bits. And then we have density. Okay, Density, the definition, is the amount of matter in a given space. So when it's compared to water you'll hear it called specific gravity. So basically 
the more matter you have in an area of space, the heavier it is. So you can measure the density, okay? You can measure the mass of the mineral and then the volume of the mineral, and when you divide it out, you'll get a density number, okay, which is the specific gravity of that mineral. That's one of the best ways to figure out which mineral you got because it'll really help narrow down the choices. And then finally, special properties. You have fluorescence, which means if you put it under a UV light, which is a black light, then sometimes the minerals will glow. So if you look at that picture on the right, the normal light just looks like a plain old rock, which it's not. We know it's a mineral. Okay, but if you put it under the black light, you see that the mineral starts to glow different colors. So that's an example of fluorescence. Magnetism is just what it sounds like, that it's got magnetic qualities. Okay, magnetite would be an example for that one. Sometimes if you powder the mineral and then put acid on it, it'll start to bubble as a chemical reaction like you see on the right side with calcite fizzing. Okay, and that will help identify what you're looking at. And then halite specifically tastes salty. So sometimes something like taste will help you identify what it is. Okay, make sure notes are filled out as usual and bring them to class tomorrow. Have a good night.